Are you a Terraria casual? Looking for a nice guy that will help you improve? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Casual Terrarian, where we will do a guided playthrough full of tips, tricks, and other information that will help you on your own Terraria playthrough. If you're new here, I'm Zuzu Corn, and here we make videos by casuals for casuals. So subscribe now so you won't miss the next episode of the Casual Terrarian. So, last episode, we fished for the Reaver Shark and managed to take down Skeletron, which gives us access to the dungeon. He was no match for the space gun. Today, we are going to focus on building our first automated money farm, which is a great source of money pre-hard mode. To do that, we are going to need statues, namely the jellyfish or the granite golem statue. Try to get a slime statue too if you can. If you don't know where these statues are found, they are mostly found in underground houses or in the dungeon. So I've actually made a dungeon-like prison underneath my glorious castle. You can see the reception area up there and a nice discussion room. We'll finish it soon, I guess. So let's go. Alright, here we are in the spider biome. It's now much safer to come here thanks to the space gun. The stylist NPC is found here too. She's always tied up in a spider biome. Nice, we found a web chest. There's a chance of finding these in the spider biome and they always contain a web slinger. This is a hook that's interesting, I guess. You can shoot out up to 8 hooks, but if you notice, the reach isn't very far and it's kinda hard to move around. I'm not a fan of this one, but feel free to use it if you want. Okay, so I came back just to grab some of these, Spelunker Potions. You can find them in chests underground sometimes, and you can craft them later on as well. I've got a few, so let me show you how good this is. Okay, here we are. Just drink the potion and look, you can see all of the ores, chests and other valuable things now. This is great if you're hunting for a certain ore, or if you're looking for underground houses, which will always have a chest that will show up. So this here is a marble biome. They might have life crystals and some nice looking pots to break. These hoplites throw javelins that hurt a lot, so try to avoid them at the start of the game. So here we have a granite biome. These usually also have life crystals. Be careful of the enemies though. We can handle them now, but anything is hard at the start. This is a glowing mushroom biome. They contain life crystals and statues sometimes. The mushrooms can be gathered as well, which are a crafting material. They are basically another type of wood. Here we actually have an underground house and a goblin statue. Oh look, we've stumbled across the skeleton merchant. He's an NPC that spawns randomly when you're underground. And what he sells depends on the moon phase, but that doesn't really matter. If you're a yo-yo user, definitely buy the counterweight too. It's a yo-yo accessory that deals extra damage. Feel free to explore the underground desert too. You're strong enough now. But the desert fossil block is quite tough to mine, so be mindful of that. Alright, another house plundered. Let's explore here. Oh, it's a nymph. Let's get her, let's get her. Oh, she's tough. Ooh, we got a metal detector too. Lucky. So the nymph is actually a really rare enemy who will spawn as a lost girl, which acts like an NPC. If you get close, it'll transform and try to kill you. It has a 0.6% chance of spawning pre-hard mode and a 0.1% or a 1 in 1000 chance of spawning in hard mode. So that was really lucky of us. By the way, if you want to ride a minecart track, just press R. Then you can go left or right. To get off, just press R again. Simple. Alright, we are here back in the dungeon to explore. This is a hollowed chest. It's a special chest that needs a special key. There are also other chests like the jungle chest and the corruption chest. The keys have a 1 in 2500 chance of dropping from an enemy of that biome. So the corruption key from the corruption biome basically. 
Even if you find one now, you can't use it until you beat a boss in hard mode. So don't worry about these too much. Wow, I've been at this for a long time. Look how huge the dungeon is. And there's still more I haven't explored, oh my. Alright, we're back. So I managed to find the Hermes boots while spelunking. So we can actually combine this with rocket boots. So just stand next to the Tinkerer's workshop and craft its combination, the Spectre boots. Now we can run fast and fly too. To fly, just hold space after you expand all your jumps. Okay, I'm getting pretty desperate for my statues. I'm now going to look for them in the jungle. But before that, let me just uncover the world to the end. Ooh, what's this? This feels suspicious. Anything down here? Oh wait, I see it. Wow, is this actually a sword shrine? Whoa, it is! This is awesome! And it's a real one too! Remember how in the last episode we found a fake sword shrine? And remember how I was mentioning a one tile space going vertically down in a forest biome? This is what I was talking about. If you see one and mine all the way down, you're likely to find a shrine. And the real one has a 9 in 10 chance of giving you an enchanted sword, and a 1 in 10 chance of giving an Akalis. Oh my gosh, we actually got an Akalis! Whoa, I'm so excited right now. This is actually my first Akalis. Whoa, look at that. Ha, ah, we are so strong. Notice how it emits light too? That's awesome. This is great, we're actually really lucky. Anyway, let's make our way to the jungle. The jungle contains lots of goodies underneath, so let's head downwards. This is an ivy chest. They'll be illuminated with a green torch nearby. They contain jungle exclusive loot, so definitely grab them if you find one. Ah, another one. This one has a gun and the two wands. The wands let you place wood and leaves, so you can literally build a tree if you want to. It's nice for decoration. Well, I've looted lots of chests, but nothing really interesting has happened so far. Look, another goblin statue, like, seriously? That's outrageous. Alright, I'm back. I managed to find something that will let us upgrade our boots further. So, combine the spectre boots with an aglet and the anklet of the wind from ivy chests, and we can make lightning boots. These have the same effects as the spectre boots, but they increase your movement speed even more. So that's nice. Let's continue our hunt for the statues. Five hours later. Alright, I've been going at this for hours, and I finally found the statues I need. I've got a slime statue and two jellyfish statues. I didn't find any granite golem statues, but if you find one, those work as well. In fact, let me show you how much I've explored. So look, I've explored a huge amount of this area, checked out almost the entire jungle too, and look at our insane dungeon. It even extends to below the ocean. Let me show you the statues I found. Look, so many of them. Four goblin statues, seriously. That's outrageous. Oh, the traveling merchant came. Nice. Let's check him out. Nothing that interesting. Oh, he has a sitting ducks fishing pole though. This is actually the second or third best fishing rod in the game. If you can afford it, I really recommend it. By the way, something fun here. You can combine a whoopee cushion which you can get from giant worms underground, with a cloud in a bottle. This makes one of these. A fart in a bottle. Kinda fun, huh? Look! Ah, that's nice. Let me show you. It's actually quite high too. It's not that bad. Oh well, let's get back to building our money farm. So to start off, build a long U-shaped structure and, well, not trap yourself inside. Alright, then place your statues down like so. Hmm, 
Now, buy a wrench from the mechanic. Any colour is fine. And some wire too. I'm actually going to get a switch so I can explain how this entire thing works. You don't have to get one. So to begin, use the wrench and draw wire like this, joining the statues together. Then draw the wire downwards. I'll put the switch down. Oh, I'm not sure if it's long enough. There we go. Alright, so now the circuit is complete. Every time you flip the switch, monsters will spawn from the statues. You can kill them manually for their drops. Now what we want is to find an automatic way for a monster to spawn without you manually clicking the switch. So for that, we need a timer. Grab some gold bars, some chain made from iron, and go to a table and chair. That's right, a table and chair. A table and chair is the crafting station for this, a gold watch. And now with the gold watch, come over here to an anvil and make this. A 1 second timer using the watch and wire. So what this does is trigger an input every second. Alright, let's replace the switch. Now turn it on. See how the monsters are spawning every second? There's actually a max to how many monsters a statue can spawn at one time. So now we need to figure out how to kill them automatically. Thankfully, that's easy. Just use this, a lava bucket. You can get this by making a bucket using iron bars, then going underground, low enough until you see lava. Then just click the lava while holding a bucket. So all you gotta do is release the lava in here. Now let's turn it on. See? Simple. Congratulations, we have built our first money farm. So, how we are gonna make money is by selling the drops. In particular, Jellyfish dropped the Jellyfish Necklace, and Granite Golems dropped the Night Vision Helmet. Oh look, there's one already. Oh, and we got a Blood Moon today. Let me just sell the necklace to show you guys. 1 gold 32 silver, that's nice. So what's so good about this farm is that it runs automatically. You know what, I'm just gonna let it run overnight and show you guys in the morning how much we can make. Let's deal with the Blood Moon. So the Blood Moon is an event where monsters will spawn even near your home. Zombies can also open your doors, so be careful with that. In addition to the increased spawn rate, there are two new enemies. The Blood Zombie, as you can see here, and the Drippler. These two monsters have a really rare drop. Oh, what do you know? There it is. Anyway, they have a low chance to drop this. A Money Throw. The Money Throw lets you summon a flying piggy bank like this. See, you can just click on it and it opens your piggy bank. This is great because you don't have to put a piggy bank on platforms or crafting benches anymore. You can just summon one and use it like this. Well, we've really got the drop, so the Blood Moon is kinda redundant now. Alright, here we are in the morning. I emptied my inventory and stored my money too. Let's see what one knight can earn us with this money farm. Whoa, look at that. There's still more we can't pick up. So let's go over to sell it. Right, there we go. So from that one night alone, we made 20 gold. It's not an absurd amount, but considering how it's automatic income, that's pretty good. All you gotta do is turn it on and that's free money. You also have a lifetime supply of gel and glow sticks. Neat. In the next episode, I'll show you how to grow your own herbs and make some potions as well. We will also take down the queen bee in the jungle and maybe explore a bit of the underworld too. We can probably fight the wall of flesh the episode after. So make sure to subscribe now so you won't miss those episodes of the casual terrarian. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. This has been Zuzucorn Games. By casuals, for casuals. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. 
拜拜。